Well hey there and welcome back to freephotoshop.com and video number two in this latest series A Beginner's Guide to Photoshop Elements. I'm still here looking at the welcome screen exactly where we left off in the previous video and I'm going to go ahead and launch the organizer right off the bat here by just clicking on the organizer icon here and that's going to open things up for us. Now basically what we've got going on here is a place to import and organize photographs and other media as well actually but there's a lot you can do in the way of organization here as we're going to find out. I'm going to start off by giving you a quick tour here just to show you what I've done so far and then we're going to go ahead and import some additional photographs and organize them just so you can get a feel for the program here. So you can see right here that the bulk of the screen is taken up with the image catalog so this is where all my photographs in the current catalog reside and a catalog is basically a collection of photographs if someone else used this PC then I may want to create a catalog for them and I can do that by coming up here to the file menu and choosing the catalog command anytime you see these little dots after a command in the menu here by the way it means it's going to open up its own dialog box where you can get more options associated with the command you're choosing so in this case we'd get an opportunity to name the catalog okay I'm gonna hit escape to collapse that menu now all the images I've got here were taken on a day trip to London and I've gone ahead and tagged them all up using the keyword tags panel over here and keywords are a brilliant way of organizing photos inside a catalog we'll see these in more detail when we tag up the photos we're going to import in just a few moments but for now check this out I'm going to come down here to the animals header and expand its view by clicking the little triangle here now because I took the time to tag these photos up I can quickly find all the photographs I took of snakes for example whilst we were visiting London Zoo so if I go ahead and click this little empty box here the preview changes to only show me photographs in the catalog of snakes now if I want to change the thumbnail size of these images so I can see them better and by saying thumbnail I mean the little preview here I can just drag this slider around at the top here and I can also use the buttons to make them either really big or really small and if I return them to their normal size here I can also double left click the image to see a full screen preview of it and then double click again to reset the view now to return to the full catalog view I'm going to click this little box again next to the word snakes so it releases the snakes keyword and we're now viewing everything inside our image catalog okay another thing you may notice here is that some of the images have dark grey borders around them and that's because they represent stacks of images that's what the grey border is actually representing sometimes when you're taking photographs you may take say three or four of the same thing just to make sure that when you get back to your computer you've got a really good version of that image well instead of choosing the best photograph and then throwing the rest away you can put them into image stacks which is exactly what I've done here so you can see with this squirrel for example if I click the little arrow here I can expand the stack and now I can see all the attempts I had of shooting this little squirrel I can collapse the stack as well by just clicking the little arrow again and whilst we're on the subject of moving things around we can also drag these panels on the right hand side around by just dragging the grey bar with the mouse we can also collapse it completely by clicking this little tiny arrow here and that's going to give us uh, a lot more room to work on screen but if you ever want it back all you got to do is click the little arrow again okay so let's go about importing some more photographs and organizing them properly inside our catalogue here so without no further ado I'm going to come up here to the file menu select the get photos and videos option and then choose whatever kind of method we want to use now for me the photos I want to import are already on the hard drive so I'll select from files and folders like so now to find the photos I want I'm going to choose the desktop then I'll choose this shortcut I have set up uh, to the project files for this series and I'm going to go inside project files and then choose the two importing and organizing photos folder now I'm going to select the Haverhill 2006 folder 
and I get a couple of options down here before I actually import them. I get to choose what options I want on and what options I want off. So the first one doesn't really matter in this scenario because I don't have any subfolders. I don't have any folders inside this particular folder I'm looking at on screen here. But I'll leave it on anyway because it's a good uh, it's a good option to have on generally. It's not one that's going to do any damage in this case anyway. The second two options I suggest you leave off. The red eye option isn't all that reliable. And if you want to remove red eye, I've got a tutorial all about how to do it right here on the freephotoshop.com website. So check that out for more information on removing red eye. In the meantime, I'm going to switch this option off or make sure it's switched off. The second one isn't a bad one, but I prefer to do mine manually. And that way you can get the images the way you want them. Once you're happy, as I am here, click the Get Photos option and Photoshop Elements will import those images into the active catalogue. Once it's done, it's going to give me this really helpful warning box saying that the main window is just going to display the recently imported photos until we hit the Show All button. And that's a really good thing actually because now we have the opportunity to tag up these images before they get lost amongst all the other images we have inside the catalogue. I'm going to hit OK and before we do anything I'm going to make sure that all the images are displaying properly. And if I just have a quick look through all of these photographs we just imported we can see that this one here, and it's only this one here I think, is going to need rotating. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate it, seeing as we're here right now and we've got it selected. And I'm going to do that by hitting this rotate left button at the top of the screen here. And that's perfect. Now let's add some keywords so we can keep track of these photographs. I'm going to go ahead and close this quick share panel by clicking the little X here. And then I'm going to drag things around here so we get a better view of the keywords panel. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select this little green plus icon here and choose New Keyword Tag from the list. And I'm going to name this new keyword Haverhill. And then I'm going to put the tag inside the Places category because Haverhill is a place, so that keeps things nice and tidy here. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now, we have a Haverhill tag. So let's add the tag to some of these photographs. In fact, let's add the tag to all of these photographs. And we're going to do that like so. We can even drag the tag onto these images one by one, which is going to take a little bit of time. Or we can just select all the images by making them smaller using the size slider at the top here. And then just clicking down here and then dragging over all the images. And that's selected all the images that we have available to us right now. Now if I drag the tag onto the photographs, it's going to add the tag to all the images we have selected. So that's just what we want to do. Okay, that's great. I'm going to return these thumbnails to a decent size. And then we're going to scroll down here towards the bottom. And we have a couple of similar photos of this river here. Let me just enlarge things even more so we get a good view of what we're looking at right now. And you can see that they were both taken at slightly different angles, so I was probably trying to get the best shot. However, the second one has a car in it. So straight away we can identify that the best shot is the first one. But instead of deleting the second image, I'm going to stack it, because you never know when you might want to come back and use this second image. So we don't want to completely delete it, we're just going to stack it instead. And I'm going to do that by selecting the first one and then shift clicking the second one so we get both of them selected here. Then I'm going to come up here to the edit menu, select stack, and then choose stack selected photos. Easy as that. Now in order to see the entire catalogue, I'm going to hit that show all button and now we can see the images as one catalogue. We can see everything inside the uh, catalogue that we already had created here when we came into the organiser. Next we have the Albums panel, which allows us to create either regular albums or smart albums. Regular albums allow you to drag photographs in and place them in any order you want. And you can use them just like conventional printed albums you might have sitting around the home, for example. A smart album, on the other hand, allows you to create an album directly related to certain criteria. 
For instance, I'll click the little green plus sign here and choose New Smart Album. And I'm going to name it Fave Photos, uh, just for favorite photos, of course. And now to set the criteria for the Smart Album, I'm going to select the rating and we'll say Is. And then we'll choose 5 for the number of stars the image has to have. So now, in order for an image to be included inside my Smart Album, all we have to do is have the photograph show a rating of five stars. So I'm going to click OK and Photoshop Elements is going to tell me straight away that no photo actually meets my search criteria. And that's because we haven't actually created any ratings for any photographs yet inside this catalog. So now I'm going to select to show all and now I'll choose a couple of photos that I think are my all time best say these first two here just for simplicity now I'll select the fifth star along and click uh, that way giving them a rating of five stars the next two I don't like too much so I'll give them say three stars each just like so now if I click inside my smart album I get to see my two best photos the ones that I gave five stars to now the great thing about smart albums is that they work on the fly meaning that if I import more photos in the future, any of those I award five stars to will appear inside this smart album just completely dynamically. So a really flexible way of organizing photos here inside of Elements. Okay, just a couple more things I wanna show you before we finish up here inside the organizer. I'm gonna hit the show all button to see all the photographs. Then I'm gonna come up here and select the display options and then choose the date view. Now I can find photographs based on when I took them. So if I navigate back to 2006 here, for example, you can see that I have some photographs which were taken on the 11th of April. And if I select the date and then come down here to the bottom and click the day option, I get to see all the images I took on this day. So it's just another way of organizing and actually finding photographs here inside of Photoshop Elements. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to the photo browser view by clicking the icon at the bottom here. Then I'll come back up to the display button and this time hit the show map option. And we get to see some instructions on how to use it. I'm just going to click OK here and Photoshop Elements will open up a map courtesy of Yahoo Maps it is actually. See by the icon here. Um, and that's going to appear on the left hand side as it has done on my screen. Now all you do is navigate the map using the controls down here that are available on the standard Yahoo Maps screen actually. And when you found the location of where the image was taken, you're just going to simply drag the image onto the map surface. What that's going to do is embed the GPS data onto the file itself, so it relates to that coordinate here inside the map view. And it's not going to leave any physical marks on the image, it's basically going to include the information, the GPS information, into the metadata of the file. So you're never going to see it's there, you're never going to know that it's there unless you actually look at the metadata of the image. So the metadata being information relating to when the file was taken, the date, the uh, camera specifications, the information regarding to how the shot was actually taken, that kind of stuff is uh, classed as metadata of the image. So the GPS information is just being included in those tags associated with the file. And this is a really cool feature of Photoshop Elements, I've got to say, the actual map view here, the fact that you can just drag images onto a map to identify where they were taken. It's uh, certainly a part of Photoshop Elements that I particularly like. You may not, but uh, I urge you to experiment here inside the map view just to see if things are going to work and appeal in the same way as they do to me. You may not like it, up to you. Okay, I'm going to X out of the map view and finally, I'll come back up here to the display button and select this option here, view photos in full screen. Effectively, what we've got going on here is a full screen slideshow. I'm gonna make a few adjustments by making sure the music is switched off, uh, if it isn't already, and then set the duration to, well, let's go with two seconds actually. Once we're ready, we'll click OK to begin the slideshow and you'll notice that we still have a menu bar up here at the top of the screen where we can do things like rate the images as they play along. I'm not going to do that however, instead I'm just going to sit back and watch the show. 
In the next video, we're going to check out the guided and quick fix modes available here inside of Photoshop Elements. Thanks for joining me as always here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you in the next video.